Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgamerguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to show you how to create creative lettering using lines with strokes and adjusted presser curves. Let's start by looking at this screen. There's one line I can adjust with the node tool. The next one is the same line but I adjusted the pressure curve. The result looks a little bit more cartoony and visually more interesting. By extending and lengthening the line the effect gets stretched. It's fairly easy though to add a few nodes with the node tool and create letters from a single line. Additional curves and a less symmetrical look make it look even more unique. The advantage of working with lines rather than shapes is I can scale, skew, rotate without any problems and it's easy to edit because I'm working with very few nodes. All these little text samples were created the same way, starting with one letter and then modifying it to create the others. So let's start with one line and give it a width and a color. Black on black is not visible and we reset the pressure curve to start with. Maybe this one is a little too thick, so I adjust the width and then alter the pressure curve. As you can see, the pressure curve is a little fiddly at times. The position is not quite there. You click just a little off and it takes another note. But it is worth it, it's a powerful tool and well worth the fiddling with. Sometimes it takes one or two tries to get it right, but it's definitely worth it. It's a great time saver. So I quickly create a curve from the first letter. The I, the U is just the rotation of the C. And if I look at a more complex letter, it's pretty much the same curve as the C and U and I just duplicate mirror it and then join the nodes and end up with one curve that is my S. I can now add a few more nodes in the central positions and curve the end and the beginning and the letter C became the letter S. Let's look at a few more letters. I duplicate my line, duplicate it again and join the nodes here to create my letter M, which the result is easily editable. I can curve it, I can smooth some of the corners, variations, additions, swirls, you name it, are quick and easy to do with just one line. Once you've created some of the key letters, the rest are pretty similar. The M and the N, and the N can be rotated, scaled and turned into the Z. Let's add two circles and here is one of the issues with the pressure curves. If you have a thick stroke and a small object, there will be problems. So you've got to adjust the width of the stroke and the pressure curve. And here with the Z, the zoo to me feels like it needs to go upwards which is a really quick edit, seeing we are just working with very few nodes. Let's start another one. This time I'm using a slightly thinner line. I adjust the widths, go in and create small letters. So the first one will be the H and it's the combination of the two lines and here once I overlap them I have to adjust the pressure curve in order not to have a bulge showing where I don't need it. So that's my H and the next one is pretty simple it's the R which is very similar and that's followed by an I. Add a circle there for that one and as soon as I pull it down too far, you can see it becomes a J, which makes it hard to read. It's easy to go overboard with your lettering. Just keep the readability and your target audience in mind. Seeing I duplicated the adjusted part of the H, I'm now copying the I and P 
pasting just the style onto the S so the pressure curve is identical with the other main letters. Once the base letters are in place, you can start going creative. With the I, I have a small problem. It's creating a big gap between the I and the R, which doesn't really look good. If I curve it that way, the gap looks even bigger. The good thing about working in vectors is that nothing is set in stone. You can play around with your design, edit with these and steadily work towards a working design. I'm going to save this design but want something a little bit more extreme so I increase the width and make the dent in the pressure curve a little deeper. Now I applied it to all the strokes which means I gotta adjust the sides of the R and the H, bringing the leftmost nodes down again. That's my name done. I probably should have thought of something more creative. The good thing about working this way is that I can easily expand the strokes and create vector shapes from all this which then allow me to fix those little bits that don't quite work because either the stroke has been too thick, the curvature is too extreme or the pressure for curve simply performing weirdly. Once I fix those little oddities I can combine all my shapes with a boolean add or a compound object add effects to it like an outline or in this case a double outline. The light blue and the purple spray effect are done with the contour tool making a slightly smaller shape duplicating that using a subtract in a compound on the slightly higher or lower version and then a Gaussian blur to give it that smooth look. Playing with designs like that is always good fun and the pressure curve makes it really easy. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification, leave a like, leave a comment and let me know what you want to see on my channel and I'll see you again soon.